Hello, everyone, and welcome to You Are My Borough with myself, Dom Sean, Scott Wilson, both from the Northern Echo. And we're looking ahead today to the game against Hull City at the Riverside on Wednesday night and back to that defeat to Ipswich Town on Saturday. Uh, Scott was at uh, the Riverside yesterday where Borough held a Christmas event. And Michael Carrick and the players were there and, and Scott had a chinwag with Carrick and Matt Clark. So we'll, we'll have a talk about that as well. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favour, just tap subscribe because that does us a... That does us a, a massive favour. We, we, we're aiming to get up to a thousand subscribers, so if you can help by getting us one closer to that, that'd be much appreciated. Leave a comment as well, as we always say. And if you're listening on podcasts, then uh, rate and review there as well. We we do watch and we do take note of, of what's going on. We appreciate the comments. Um, Scott, we'll, we'll start with the Ipswich game before we before we talk about your chat with Michael Carrick yesterday. Yeah. You, you, you wrote afterwards that. Oh, you asked the question afterwards. Sorry, is is it injuries that was the was the major contributing factor to the defeat, or is there perhaps bigger issues at play? A, f- a few days on, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm going to adopt the classic journalist pause. I think of a bit of both. Bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, listen, you know, nine first team players out. Any any championship club is going to. Um, struggle to cope with nine senior players out, and and they're not, uh, you know, as we kept on saying on this vid, they're not just any senior players, are they? Hayden Hackney, arguably Borough's best player, Riley McGree, one of their most creative players, Paddy McNair and Daryl Lenahan, where you definitely have at least one of them in as you said, the first choice centre. You know, they're big players that are out. So, you know, I think you definitely have to give Borough a pass at the moment um, with, with the number of players they've got out. But but I do also think. It probably is. Um, it probably is hinting at the fact that this team is is probably not quite at the level of the side. Certainly in the second half of last season, and it's probably going to be a battle to get into the playoffs this time round. Now, you know there are caveats in that. Let's see what happens in January. You know there there are other teams who are going to have fluctuations in form, um, but. You know, for all that Borough are still banging in around there, and they absolutely are, that is probably a reflection of the fact that that's the way the championship generally pans out, and pretty much every team who aren't in the bottom four or five are, are still in and around it now. So, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the model that Borough have gone down. A lot of young players, you know, that, that side at the weekend had a lot of young and experienced players in it. There's definite signs there with a, with a you know a number of them that that, that that there's players there and they will progress and they will develop, but you know to what extent is this a two three year job of getting these players in and improving the squad season on season, or to what extent are we expecting this team to win promotion this season? And I think that's going to be the interesting dynamic as the season unfolds because you know this is a long term plan, isn't it? And and the whole I you know. In some ways, the trade-off for, for adopting a long-term plan is that at the start, you, you're going to hit bumps in the road. And, and Saturday kind of felt like one of them, I thought. Ipswich good? Yeah. Yeah, as I thought they were good on the first day of the season when I saw them against Sunderland. I thought they were good again. Um, Well-organised, well-drilled, clearly confident. But I think the key thing with Ipswich is they have a front three that's right up there as good as anything in the league. They've got three forward players who will almost certainly all finish the season in double figures. Um, You know, Chaplin's nearly there already, I think, isn't he? And and he looks a really good player. I thought he was the standout of the weekend. But Hurst and Broder, if they stay fit, I would imagine will finish the season with 10 goals. Well, you know, what a starting point that is. If if you've got, what, 40 goals from your front three, which which you're probably going to get, then... You know, if you've got anything else in behind that, you've got a chance. And what they've got in behind that is is a pretty well organised, well functioning side that has got used to winning over the last what year, eighteen months. Um, I think they'll stay up there. I think they'll definitely finish top six. I'm not saying they'll finish top two, because I think that Leeds and Southampton will have a big say about that now they've kind of shaken off their early season stutter. But I'd be really surprised if Ipswich didn't finish top six. Yeah, I want to I want to talk about that because because I, I think it's a opportunity really you know we're approaching halfway I think we can take stock now of how the league looks we touched on it last week and perhaps four from six are already decided but but, but before we get into that um let's just touch on injuries on on the back of you of you speaking to Michael Carrick yesterday some some relatively promising news in that Hayden Hackney the hope is he's going to be back 
by Christmas, which which you know is what three three games, four games, sorry, including including Wednesday night's game against Hull. Um, it's still a big chunk to miss if if he was to miss those four games. But at least it's not long long term. But what what's the general feeling? No no one back for Hull. Yeah, so also- the general feeling seemed to be obviously Jones and Dyke Steele back into the squad. Um, because they were obviously suspended, but they're back. Dale come through the game okay, which is obviously a big relief, given he'd been out. So he will be in the starting side against Hull, um, all things being equal. Um, but in terms of the injured lads coming back, no, I, I don't think there'll be anyone else um, for the whole game. I mean, again, Carrick was, was you know not really wanting to be definitive on that, but certainly the strong suggestion was nobody else coming back. Um but as I say, we, we asked kind of directly on Hackney, you know, is this a worry now? Is this getting into a long-term thing? And he said, no, it's it's not a long-term thing. Um, he'll be back before Christmas. Now, you know, he's not back on Wednesday. I, I'm not, I don't think he's back in full training yet. So that would probably suggest Saturday is a bit of a stretch. But maybe the Cup game, um, the, maybe the Port Vale game. If not that, then probably West Brom on the weekend before Christmas. I think one of those two. Um, he's likely to be back for, and then obviously, um, McGree remains a bit of an unknown quantity in terms of exactly when he'll be back, as is the case with McNair. Four still feels a bit longer term, and obviously, Lenahan and Smith, we're, we're not going to see probably the rest of the season. And, and Josh Coburn's carrying a couple yeah. of nails because that, that was a talking point, wasn't it, after Saturday's game? The fact he wasn't introduced, but he's, he's carrying a couple of niggles as well. Yeah, so Coburn obviously didn't come off the bench. And I think, you know, I, I mentioned it in my report and I know a few fans picked up on it with us on social media that, you know, we have all this talk about all the players being missing. Well, why on earth doesn't Josh Coburn come on when you're chasing a game and, and you're struggling to create chances? Well, in fairness to Carrick, Carrick said, you know, we put that to Michael yesterday. And, and as I say, in fairness to him, his response was, well, look, you know, it's not a major thing, but there is a niggle there. There is a knock there. We have to be very careful about how we manage Josh and the number of games we're asking him to play at the minute. So, you know, if Borough were in a cup final tomorrow and they needed Josh Coburn to start, he'd be able to start. But he might not then be able to play for a week, two weeks after that. I think it's with all the games that are coming up and the fact that, you know, Latalath is obviously the only real other forward option at the moment. I think, I think they are having to be careful with Coburn. So... You know, I don't think that means that they can't use him, but I think it means they're just having to be pretty sparing and, and pick and choose when they do. Before, I know obviously we'll talk about the whole game more length a bit later on, but just on, on, on the back of injuries and selection, with, with Dyke Steele being fit again, do, do you think he puts Dyke Steele in and moves Van den Berg across and, and gives Matt Clark a... Re- Is it too much to ask Matt Clark to play two games in four days? Or, or, or do you think Dyke Steele's on the bench and he sticks with that back four? <sighs> I think Dyke Steele's on the bench and he sticks with the back four, personally. Um, yeah, we'll get the, the kind of full team in a minute. But I think it's an interesting one because, yeah, Clark, obviously, he's had such a long time out. Um, he's come back. He's had the, the, the two sub-appearances against Preston and Leeds. Although, in fairness, Leeds was nearly a full game, wasn't he? He played, he played an hour in that game. Um, and then he obviously played at the weekend. I mean, like you say, we, we chatted to Matt Clark yesterday and there's some really... You know, he, he was really honest and open about what he's gone through and all of that. And that's going to be um, in the print version of the Northern Echo on Wednesday morning and online first thing Wednesday morning as well. So give that a read if you can, because, um, yeah, I thought he was really, really honest and open about kind of what, what he's been up against. Now, um, he feels fit. He, he feels like he's he's right back and he, and he wants to push as hard as he can and, and give everything a go. So... I don't think it's a question that he can't do it. You know, would you want him to do it? Will, will the rustiness kind of be there? Maybe, but, you know, there's an argument that what he needs now is a run of games to really get right back into it and see just how, how you know, good his back is and how well he's healed and everything. So, um, I, I think I think he'll name Vandenberg, Fry, Clark, Engel as the back four person. But, but the, 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 the championship table then, so... 20 games played. This is before the midweek games, before the Tuesday night games. Obviously, Sunderland Le- uh, Leeds is one of the, the games yeah. on Tuesday night. Borough Wednesday. So, as, as things stand, Leicester 49 points from 20, Ipswich 48, Leeds 41, Southampton 38. Then there's a six point gap to West Brom in fifth with 32. 
And six points back from them in 14th is Bristol City in 14th, which is a classic case of the championship, isn't it? There's always teams at 15th, 16th, will be yeah. looking and thinking, and thinking they stand every chance. I know, I know we're not even halfway through yet, but is it, is it two from six available in the top six? Are those are those top four set for the playoff? Uh, it playoff? feels like it. It feels like it. Yeah, I mean, even if there wasn't that six-point gap between Southampton and West Brom, the way that Southampton, as I say, have clicked back into gear after what was a fairly shaky start for them, um, and, and, and you could say the same about Leeds as well, those two and Leicester, you know, at the start, this is one of the very few things I think I'm probably going to have got right on our preview pod right at the start of the season was saying that for me, it, it looked like a year when the three relegated teams could fill the top three positions. And, and it doesn't normally work out like that. Well, Ipswich will have a say in that, but it would not surprise me at all if the top three come the end of the season with some combination of Leicester, Leeds and Southampton. I think they'll definitely be in the top six. I think Ipswich will stay there because, like I say, they, they score a lot of goals and they're not reliant on one player for those goals. So if they were to lose one of those front three, yes, it'd be a blow for them, but I'd still back that the other two would still carry on scoring. So I think, yeah, I think the top four will finish in the top six. So I think it is two positions that are up for grabs. Um, and as you've alluded to there, I think that's wide open. I mean, you know, West Brom... You saw them at the weekend lose at Sunderland. You know, yes, there's some real talent there and they've played really well at times this season. They've got a pretty good home record, but, you know, they're certainly not infallible. Sunderland can be brilliant on their day, but clearly there's question marks there about who the head coach is going to be and, and whether that'll be a disruption or not. Cardiff and Preston seem to be dipping after, after its strong starts. Hull, Hull are kind of there or thereabouts look better than they've been in previous seasons, certainly, but but you wouldn't you certainly wouldn't have them nailed on for a top six finish. Watford, you know, good on their day, but erratic. Blackburn kind of being what Blackburn do, where you know they, they win games and they look like they shouldn't. Schmodix is the this season's kind of Brerett and Diaz, isn't he? Scoring goals left, right and centre, but do they have enough around that? And then we're at Borough and Norwich. So Absolutely wide open, I think, for those other two places. And and, and Burra, you know, for all that I've said, you know, yes, these young players are going to have to be given time and a bit of a chance. This still is a massive chance of a season for Burra because I think there are two play up two spots in that top six that I think will be wide open for the rest of the season. I don't think there's a standout team from the rest. And 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 that kind of leads us on. Given given the start, Burra have had. Given the injuries that they've had in recent weeks, I think if if you offered Michael Carrick the position Borough were in now, three points off the top six going into the January window, I mean, he'd have snapped your hand off for that after seven games, wouldn't he? Yeah. But I think even even if Borough were to, going to go, were to go in at the January window, three points off the top six, and potentially in the last four of the Carabao Cup, now, uh, you know, it, it's dangerous to hang all of your hopes on a January transfer window. But the fact Kieran Scott said on the record very recently that Borough are ready to go shows that there are plans in place. Borough aren't going to come out of the window having having failed to strengthen. I think when you look when you look at those teams below, um, I think Preston's best spell is behind them. I can't see Preston stringing a run together like they did at the start of the season. Watford are inconsistent. Cardiff, I'm staggered, are still up there really. Perhaps that's just a, the... Um, lazy misconception of what I expected of them at the start of the season. But but I, when I have seen them this year, they haven't blown no. me away. Some no. are an unknown quantity because of the reaction to their new head coach when, whenever he comes in. Norwich, David Wagner was fighting for his job only a couple of weeks ago. Blackburn blow hot and cold, don't they? If, if Borough have a good transfer window, there's it's not difficult to make a case for them getting into those final one of those final two spots. No, absolutely not. Um, absolutely not, and I, and I agree with you that you know if 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 you could get through the games that are coming up now to um, to January, get the New Year's Day out of the gate, we I would say that Borough are still within three points of the playoff places and have beaten Port Vale in a League Cup semi final. I think that will do between the end of the year. Now I know there's some you know on paper, Borough's remaining games are reasonably inviting. Um, right through to the start of the new year, they do. So, you know, there is opportunities there. But 
but we've we've alluded to the fact that the injuries are still going to be kind of in and around. They're still going to be an issue. So, you know, I, I think to some extent, it's just a case of, of, of keeping ticking over, keeping on picking up the points to stay in and around it. And then hopefully, like you say, A, have a good January, bring two or three players in who can just bolster that squad. And B, get your Hackneys and your McGrees and your McNairs um, potentially forced back into it to have a real go um, in that second half of the season. Uh, yeah. Looking at those coming games, obviously all we're going to talk about, Swansea still without a manager. We'll see whether that changes before Saturday. Obviously, things can change. So apologies if you're watching and listening to this, and it has. But at the minute, there's no indication that anything's imminent there. Port Vale, West Brom, who I watched at Sunderland on Saturday, and they were all right. They had a bit of control in the first half without really doing anything with it. Josh Madger went off. That looked, looked like a serious one, which is a which is a blow for them. They, they looked vulnerable. Sunderland were the better team there and deserved winners. Um, Rotherham, who, <clears throat> sorry, appointed Liam Richardson, former Wigan manager. We're, we're at that stage where it feels like every other week we're going to be talking about managers now. Alex Neal at Stoke. Yeah. yeah. What, a, what a funny team because up here last year when Borough were in a good run and at that stage looked like catching Sheffield United was a real possibility, Stoke came and got the draw. And I remembered writing that it was a good point because Stoke looked a million dollars in it. And it, they, were, they were as good as any team I saw up here last year. Yeah. Burnley aside. Um, and at that stage, you're thinking, oh, they, they look well set for next year. And yet, I feel like that's been the case at every season over the last four or five. At some stage, you've thought, this Stoke team have got to come. It's going to click. They, they just never do. They seem to get a result against Borough, though, don't they? That's, that's, that's yeah. one thing. But, um, yeah, and I mean, you know, obviously, I've, I've seen this kind of, you know, Alex Neal left Sunderland because he wanted pretty much complete control over transfers and wanted a far bigger say than he was ever going to get at Sunderland. Well, he's had it at Stoke and it just has not worked at all. And so he leaves now, leaving, you know, a squad of players that he's brought in that a new head coach or manager could very easily come in and just want to rip apart from the word go and Stoke is starting again. And, and that's the cycle that Borough have been in time and time again. It's the cycle that Sunderland were in before they decided you know, to change tack as well. So it's interesting, I think, that, you know, let's see what happens with Stoke. But if there is to be an, yet another overhaul there, then it's probably more kind of grist to the mill and more reason why Borough are right to have, to have changed tack and adopted this longer-term, more strategic kind of transfer recruitment policy of which the head coach is a massive part of, but is not the be-all and end-all of. Because how many times have we seen you know, the, the type of managerial change that Stoke have made happening at Borough and the whole thing getting turned upside down, ripped apart, starting again, doesn't work, does it? No, um, they were beaten by Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday. Fair play to Danny Rowell there. He's got a bit of a reaction out of them. He made yeah, he's got more of a tune out of them than I thought he'd be able to. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, enough enough of manager talk from elsewhere. Hull on Wednesday night. Um, given... For all we've talked about there, Borough's still been right in amongst it. This feels like a big game, I think, on the back of a, an indifferent spell, really. The def a couple of defeats, it, it, going to Swansea on Saturday, which which is never an easy game. I know the, the manager list at the minute. Feels like a big game. It feels like a game Borough could really do with winning. Yeah, well, it's three defeats in four, isn't it? Now, the, the win in the middle of that was against Leicester. So that shows what Borough are capable of on their day. And they absolutely are. Don't get me wrong. But... um. You know, the, the the defeat at the weekend, for all that Ipswich were, were, were good and are going to be up there, you know, yes, the result was disappointing, but the performance was disappointing as well because Burra never really created anything. It all felt very disjointed. Um, there was never really any kind of a spell in the game where they properly got on top and imposed themselves on Ipswich. Um, and so, you know, yes, you, you they could do with a result, but I think more than anything, they just need a more cohesive performance and the kind of performance they were turning in last season when, you know, they, they'd got control of a home game and bossed it and basically melded it to how they wanted it to be. We haven't seen enough of that from Borough this season. So I think that's the challenge, isn't it? You know, get on top of the game, make it into a game that, that, that pans out the way you want to play it um, and then let your kind of quality come through um, because 
we haven't really seen enough of that from Borough this year. For all that, there's been some very good performances and very good results. Um, you know, I, apart from, you know, there's been an odd one. I mean, clearly the Preston game was as dominant as you like. And, and that's that's the kind of blueprint for this kind of game against Hull. But there's been occasions when they haven't been anywhere near that. And, and Saturday was one of them, wasn't it? Feels like a big game for Hull as well, which I think adds to the adds to the yeah. feel of it really because they've lost a couple on the bounce and that their takeover and and everything that's happened since that that has always had the feel to me of one that was going to go either way. Mm. Um, but fair I think play, Redeem has done well though, hasn't he? I think yeah, he's well, he really think, got something about. Yeah, I think I think they seem to be onto something and the 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 I like Rossini. I think I, I like the way his teams play. I I, I always remember when. Um, he came up here to Borough when Derby was Rooney. Was he was in yeah. charge with Rooney. It was before Rooney got the job, I think. Borough won 3 0. Um, I think it was 3 0. And I didn't think Derby were all that bad, but Rossini hammered him afterwards. It was, I'm sure it was COVID. I'm sure it was the COVID season. Right. Because I remember yeah. being in that temporary press room. Rossini hammered him afterwards. And I, I remember thinking, like, it felt overly harsh. I wonder whether there was an element at the time of, like, an interim head coach, maybe trying a yeah. little bit too hard type too thing. Hard, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah, I always think he comes across personable and well, and he's done a good job there, hasn't he? He has. Yeah, he has. Um, because like you say, you know, the, the off-field situation at Hull has felt like a circus for an awful long time, but it finally feels like they've got a bit of a grip of that. And again, they're another club who seems to now want to put a plan in place and st a structure in place that isn't as knee-jerk and reactive and, and haphazard as it's been in the back in the past rather um and and you know to make that work you need to get the head coach appointment right as we've seen at borough um but Rossini, like i say i i am quite impressed with him i think he's a manager who'll go pretty far to be perfectly honest i think he's quite astute he seems he seems tactically fairly versatile you know seems to everything you kind of hear it, it seems to be a decent man manager who the players like so um yeah i think there's a lot of positives there i mean Hull are just another one of these teams that, as you've alluded to, are going to be looking at it, thinking if we can just hang in there to March, April time, if we can put a run together then, we can absolutely finish in the top six, and they can. But they could also finish 14th if they if they dip and, and don't quite get anything in January and then it goes down. You know, there's an awful lot of sides in the Championship very, very much like that. I'd definitely put Hull in that bracket. Let's talk about Aaron Conley. We, we touched on him last week. Yeah. Um Funny one, isn't he? Because cl clearly a talented player didn't didn't happen for him at Borough. Was never going to happen on the pitch or off the pitch. From from things you hear, it was maybe the, the the right player at the wrong time. But for whatever reason, it never looked like being a, a success, did it? Um, Rossini has got a tune out of him to to an extent. He scored five goals this season. He was a substitute at the weekend. When when you look back at that second half of the season, obviously Wilder was in charge, but Balogun was the mystery, wasn't yeah. it? Because you look at what he's gone on to achieve. And I, and I remember he just seemed to be hitting form for Borough. And I think he went away with the 21s and he might have scored a goal or two. And then he came back and was in and out for the rest of the season. And for whatever reason, it never really took off. Conley never looked like being a success. Balagon, you look back, Balagon, sorry, you look back and think kind of if only, don't you? You absolutely do. Yeah, I mean... It... My memory of Balogun, and, I, and I, I, this might be a little bit warped because of what he's gone on to achieve, but my memory is that he, was, he wasn't that far away. I have a memory of him hitting the post constantly. Now, that <laughs> might be absolute rubbish. <laughs> I, I, I need to go back and see how many times he actually did, but I just seem to see him breaking into the left-hand side of the box and wrapping it against the post. Time and time again, he probably never did it. It's probably just my mind. You I know remember I mean? him scoring a goal when it was it at Birmingham when he cut in from the outside. And... I do remember him. You know, he certainly wasn't the player that you looked at and thought, "What on earth have they brought him in for?" He is a million miles off, and you know, there's plenty of loanees that Borough brought in in the last decade where that's applied to. Connolly, you looked at it and just thought, "Well, he doesn't really want to be here, does he?" Like, what's going on there? What, 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 where's his head at? What's his attitude about? You know. Does he really want to try and prove himself here? What, what what's he doing? That certainly wasn't the case for Balogun. He was trying. It's just it just didn't quite click. Um, but yeah, as I say, with Balogun, I, I genuinely do think you could see signs of a player in there. 
Connolly, just for whatever reason, it, it was it, it just didn't feel like a, 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 a marriage that was going to work at all, did it? At any stage, really. And I think, really? He's, yeah, I think he's kind of admitted as much in subsequent interviews, hasn't he? That you know, for whatever reason, it, it just never, it just never felt right. It was never something that was, you know, going to work. You wonder what what we'd have seen of Balogun if Carrick was in charge, don't you? That, yeah, well, that's know, it. Like that. you know, I'm not not necessarily a slight and wider, but but seeing what Carrick's done with young attacking players, that what he got out of Archer last year, the clearly what the the, the wonder he worked with Akpom, Ramsey. Mm. There's so many examples, isn't there? Um, and just the way that the Borough side, Carrick's Borough side, yeah. would would work. You know, Balogun could have could 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 um. You know, could play in a number of different so roles. Fluid, yeah, the yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it, it would have been interesting. It would have been interesting. Um, Sorry about that slight technical issue, but we're back with you now. J just finally on that, Aaron Conley be typical, wouldn't it, if he came and scored on Wednesday night? He's gonna be, he's gonna be um, the kind of uh, scumbag first goal scorer bet, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have we seen it? How many times have we seen it? Um, yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Um, but it, yeah, it, it wouldn't be a complete surprise, would it? Um, the way that football tends to work. If it was still fry up against him, though, warning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would think so. Or Matt Clark or, or Vandenberg or whoever else plays yeah. the centre half. And, yeah. and if it's in a two-one or a three-one or a four-one Borough win, then it then it doesn't really matter. Um, exactly. Predictions. You, you were right at the weekend. Um, you, our first yeah. predict the Borough defeat, and you were right. What's your feeling for Wednesday night? Yeah, don't take any real joy from that. But it, it was the first one we predicted them to get beaten. And they did. I'm, I don't think that'll happen on Wednesday. I genuinely don't. I'm much more confident about Wednesday. I think Jones being back, which we haven't really touched on, but I think that's a factor, definitely, because I thought on Saturday, Borough just missed someone with a little bit of incision or who could do something a little bit different. And at least Isaiah Jones will give you that down the right-hand side. Um, so I think I think Borough will be a, a, you know, a much better attacking unit with him in it. I think Greenwood going back across the left will help as well because I didn't think he looked particularly comfortable when he played out on the right. Um, so, in a nutshell, I think Borough will win. Um, let's go 2 0. Yeah, I think I think Borough will win. Um, Hull might score. I, I think 2 1. I think I'll go 2 1 or 3 1. But yeah, I think I think Borough will win, which will then set us nicely up for the long trip to Swansea City on Saturday. Thanks thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Do get in touch if you want us to discuss anything over the over the Christmas period on these vids or pods. Like I say at the start, if, you, if you're watching on YouTube, do tap subscribe, leave a comment. If you're listening on, uh, on, your, on your podcast channels, then rate and review. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the game on Wednesday night.